warm welcome for Dr. Harvey Fishman. Okay. Um, now, the last thing is that I'm going to talk about is we're going to talk about the microbiome of the eye. So this is actually probably one of the most controversial topics um, of the entire uh, talk, which is that do, do we actually have a microbiome? Uh, is there a core microbiome in our eye, in and around our eye, like there is in the gut? We all know that if you, um, you know, we know that if you culture the bacteria in the, in the intestine of people, that, you know, it's going to change on a day-to-day -day basis, and we know that it's going to do all sorts of, you know, changes throughout life. But we, we also have a sense that if you do the microbiome study, um, if, you, if you do a culture of your, of your gut or you do the 16S RNA genetic analysis, you'll find similar results, okay? It might differ a little bit, but there's gonna be sort of this core bacteria that you have there. And we know that clinically because we know that, you know, you can be unhealthy with a, a particular gut microbiome and that by shifting it, you can become healthy. And then when you shift it, it actually stays that way. So we know that that kind of, thing. but the eye is very different. The eye is a really dynamic place. We're constantly blinking. We have tear function. It's, it, it, you know, one of my retina colleagues said, boy, I'm glad, Harvey, that you're doing dry eye disease because it's one of the most boring things in the world. You know, I could never imagine being a dry specialist, and thank God there are people like you doing dry eye. And I, and I just kind of laughed because he's, you know, he's a retina guy, and, and I almost went into retina. I actually had a fellowship where I could have been a retina person. I didn't. I'm glad because this is way more interesting. Dry eye and understanding the biology of the eye is so much more interesting and so much more complex. I mean, think about, I mean, yes, there's some really cool things that occur in the retina. We have retinal ganglion cell death and apoptosis and transplantation and subretinal implants and all that stuff. But, but think about the dynamics of the eye. You're constantly blinking. You have tears that are coming out. You're in an environment. Some people wear glasses. Some people don't wear glasses. Some people wear contact lenses. So this is an incredibly complex environment that changes. I mean, talk about a minute to minute, a second to second change of the, back of the microbiome in your eye. So then the question is, is there really a core microbiome? This actually is a, a study that was done and it shows um, the, the incredible diversity in your eye. It's not just one bacteria, it's a lot. And there are sort of two theories, and this guy, Russell Van Gelder, who's um, an amazing scientist, he's an immunologist, he actually did MD-PhD at Stanford, he, he was just before me. Um, he is uh, one of the leaders in this area, and he wrote a paper basically talking about the ocular microbiome. He said there are two views, uh, that the organisms um, that are there can be isolated sporadically from the ocular surface, um, and they come and they go. Um, but they basically, the implication is that they, are, that, that they are stable colonizers, that they're not stable colonizers, that they're just here and there, they're just sort of transients, and, and that their fate is to be killed or removed from the eye. So it could be that we they have, you know, that, this, that whatever you measure on the eye at any one time is just a random, you know, uh, test. And then there's another group of people um, who believe that there is a core microbiome, a core constitu uh, consortium of microbes that colonize the ocular surface. Thanks for the glasses, by the way. I can actually read that now. Okay, so um, the other thing that's interesting is that um, when, you, when you think about the ocular biome, uh, one of the questions is, you know, we've been talking about the possibility that, and the idea that the gut really influences our ocular health, we know it influences uh, fat and, and, and thin mice, whether they have diabetes or they're obese or not. But think about all of those diseases in our eyes that we always scratch our head about and say, hey, we have no idea, okay? Like episcleritis. How frustrating is episcleritis, right? I mean, episcleritis is really frustrating because sometimes you can't get rid of it. And, you can't, and, you, and you, when you do your rheumatologic panel, nothing, almost nothing comes up. In the, in, the, in the textbooks, it's like they say 75% of the time you'll, you'll not find anything. In my practice, it's like 99% of the time. In the real world, we typically, when we work up an episcleritis, it's very rare that somebody comes in who doesn't already have a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or some other autoimmune disease that you know about that you actually make a diagnosis. So like, you know, who knows what, why we get episcleritis? Chronic follicular conjunctivitis if it's not contact lens related or even allergies themselves. What about pterygium tigesin's disease? A lot of these things are actually idiopathic. I mean, lots of people are in the sun. Why doesn't everybody get, you know, pterygium? 
right? I mean, it, it, there's some reason that some people get pterygium and some people don't. There's some pe reasons. And so one of the thoughts is that it's the actual, the, the microbes in your eye are interacting just like the microbes in your gut interact with your health, that the microbes in your eye interact with your health, uh, with your eye health. And there's always inflammatory components. And it goes back to that huge inflammatory cycle that you have some T cells that are, are, help, that are protective and some T cells that aren't. And then you're, it's this really complex environment. And then if you have a dysregulation of the surface, okay, the, you know, a dysregulation meaning that you could have some uh, bacteria that are they're, they're releasing toxins or they have certain things on their, on their, their cell surface that then activates the, the immune system that then attacks the eye. Okay, and so the, the go, goes back to that, that liver patient I told you about, where we were, and that's one of the few areas, the few times that we have like a success that we, you know, where we use flagell to wipe out the, the, the gut of the C. difficile patient. Wouldn't it be interesting if we can do that very selectively by introducing very specific um, organisms to your eyes? So forget the antibiotics. What if we were, what if, I mean, there's, when it comes to bacteria, there's only a certain amount of bacteria that can live on your eye, in your gut, anywhere. There's only, it has to do with thermodynamics, right, and, and, and energy. Right? You can't, you can't, there's, and, and space. So there's only a limited number, or not limited, but there's a, there's a finite number that can live there. And so if you push one away, you're going to get another one there. So the, really the question is, when we talk about precision medicine in the future, are we able to to control the, the, the bacteria in our eye to elicit changes in the, uh, in the, in the, in the uh, uh, disease of our eye. Um, this was another paper that came out. They looked actually at, at, at um, not only uh, bacteria, but they look at viruses. And they found that, um, that there are viruses uh, that live on our eye all the time. And this is the one that they discovered here. And um, the ocular, the healthy ocular uh, surface microbiome, um, while it's posse bacteria, meaning it doesn't have a lot of bacteria on it, it has bacteria. Uh, and you can culture bacteria all the time on the eye. Um, and what's interesting, at least in this paper, is that they found, and again, this goes back to uh, if, you have, if you have patients who are, with the whole contact lens, basically the skin, the conjunctiva that is adjacent to the uh, skin on the, out, on the um, orbicularis and on uh, the pretarsal skin, that skin with, with its microbiome is very much affecting the, the eye health. And, the, and it's very much affecting the bacteria that lives in the eye. This actually uh, is a paper, one of the most interesting papers that came out. And what it shows is that trying to figure out what the core microbiome of the eye, as I said, is very difficult. They actually had to use statistical methods to, to back out data to determine whether there's actually a core microbiome and because of the complexity of the, the bacteria changing all the time. And they did think, at least according to this work and others, that there is this core microbiome, but it's very, very low in, in number. And that you have all these other bacteria, viruses, parasites that come in and live around and come in and, 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 and live in your eye, and in and around the eye and change the data quite a bit. Okay. Um, this just shows that you can have um, uh, at different time points, and this is similar to what I just said, at different time points you can have very different levels of bacteria in the same patient. And again, that goes back to what I said, it's a very complex environment. Okay. Um, and then this shows, again, there's a big diversity of, of bacteria on the, on the conjunctiva. Um, what's really interesting was this paper that came out, and, and again, we don't have, and, and, as I mentioned before, there's only about 100 to 200 papers on the microbiome and ocular disease. This one was interesting because it basically said that bacteria that live on your eye uh, degrade the mucin. So again, it goes back to that statement I said before, which is that, that depending on the bacteria that live in and around your eye, you may or may not have worse pterygium, episcleritis, in this case, dry eye disease. And this may go back to why, for instance, when we eat omega-3, that it helps your eye. It may be that the omega-3 has nothing to do directly with an anti-inflammatory effect on the immune system in your eye. It may have everything to do with the fact that you're shifting the ratio of the bacteria in your gut, which then affects your uh, microbiome of your eye or the inflammatory properties of your eye. Now, what's really interesting and what we really don't know at this point is whether, how does, is, is the bacteria in your gut, how does the bacteria in your gut relate to the bacteria in your eye? And are you basically just transferring poop from your to your eye. 
I have a microbiologist actually in my practice, one of the most famous microbiologists uh, in the world, and he, uh, and I asked him this question. I said, I said, why, what do you think? He says, oh, he says, you know, go back to the experiments uh, with the vaccines, with the polio vaccines. If you look at the, um, one of the, the oral, we used to have an oral uh, polio vaccine, um, a, a mouth-based one. In fact, there was a big, huge, you know, fight over the, you know, whether intramuscular versus, versus the oral. And it turns out that we, there's something called herd immunity, which you know about, um, and that many, uh, that, you know, basically kids were pooping out or people were pooping out the vaccine and then other people were getting it and, and they would be eating it and, and it goes all around your face and your eyes. So basically whatever comes out of us is actually going in our eyes all the time. And that almost definitely is affecting the microbiome of your eyes. So to change your gut, you're probably changing your eye and then you're changing your overall health. This is pretty gross, right? When's lunch? <laughs> So um, this is a very interesting pa paper, um, and basically what this one, what this paper said, which I can now read, is that, that people who had oral antibiotics were more susceptible to getting uh, pseudomonas, ocular infections. Isn't that interesting? At least in this paper. So if they, could, they were, if they had, um, uh, and this, uh, this if, if, you, if you took, uh, this, in this case it was mice, not people, but you, if you basically took mice and you treated them with a, an antibiotic cocktail um, uh, that you would change their microbiota, and then what you did is you induced essentially pseudomonas on their eye, the ones that you um, gave oral antibiotics to got pseudomonas and the ones that did not, did not. So that's pretty amazing. And, and our colleague here has just shared a personal experience that's very similar. He took oral antibiotics and he got psoriasis. Psoriasis is an autoimmune disease of the skin. Um, this is, I don't know if anybody's seen this work. This, I, I'm just showing this. It just shows how different two populations of people are, contact lens wearers and non-contact lens wearers. And that just show, these, this is just showing the incredible di diversity that you have when you have when you wear contact lenses and how it really changes. And so when we put those foreign devices on our eyes, we're really doing something. We're really changing it. And it may be in the future, again, we may be looking at a situation where we use probiotic antibiotic drops, or excuse me, probiotic uh, eye drops. And this was a, a cool paper, uh, right? Let's see if I, I'm going to show it in a second. Um, oh, let me go back here. Yeah, so this is a neat paper. So these are patients, basically, what he did, what this person did, this is real people. This is a person, this is a patient who had um, allergies, okay? They had ocular uh, allergies. They had vernal conjunctivitis. Vernal carotid conjunctivitis, if you haven't, seen, how many people have seen it in kids? Really bad versions. You know, I have so many adult patients who, have, who I look at their corneas and they have all of this scarring, superior scarring. They have, um, they have all of the, the, you know, they have these amazing scars on their cornea uh, and they have regular astigmatism. And I find, you know, what it turns out is a lot of those patients were, ki were kids who had terrible allergies and they got vernal conjunctivitis with vascular ingrowth into their corneas. So vernal conjunctivitis is not just it, it's a real vision threat. It can be a real vision threatening um, uh, and, and, uh, disease. Um, and then the problem is that you have these kids where, you know, what do you, what do, you do with them? You can, some of them respond really nicely to immune therapy where you, they, go, they get allergy shots. But a lot of them, you put them on steroids. So now you're giving these kids steroids and they're more likely to get cataracts later in life and you're stressing the optic nerve, right? Maybe it goes back to what we talked about. Those kids might get a little pop in their, in their IOP, and their immune system then is recognizing a stressed out optic nerve, and then they get glaucoma. So there are real consequences to even what we think is like a trivial disease, like vernal keratoconjunctivitis. So what this, guy, what this study showed is that they could actually um, improve vernal conjunctivitis just by using a probiotic eye drop. This was a very uncontrolled experiment, and it's, I, I don't know much of the details about where they got the probiotic and so forth, but it was really interesting data to suggest that this is, might be where we're moving towards, okay, and how we treat disease.